We continue the second part of our discussion. In the previous section, we've already seen the relationship between the stockholders and uh, bondholders and stockholders and managers and see how things can go wrong with examples. Now we move on to the relationship between stock the, the firm and the financial markets as well as the firm and the society. So these are the two relationships which we will observe and we'll see and we'll try and figure out what uh, what exactly governs these relationships and what could go wrong in these relationships, right? Now, take a look at this example. Uh, we've already seen earlier that Bharti Defense and ABG Shipyard both lost money in this open offer. Now, there are two companies, which is company one and company two, who are bidding for a company three. If there is a bidding war, then the only shareholders who benefit in most cases would be of these companies, right? So here the shareholders benefit. Typically, when there is a bidding war going on, one of these guys is surely going to overpay. If you're over going to overpay, this should be negative from the stockholders perspective right but when you look at this in detail you see that both Bharti and ABG surge on the open offer which means the stocks go up right shares went up 17 percent ABG shipyard also rose uh, and the shares rose by three and a half percent or something so how can the shares of both the acquirer and the target both going up how does that happen because when one guy is buying uh, another company unless we can genuinely say that a lot of value will get created because of this merger and historically there is no real evidence around this most mergers end in failures because the acquirer overpays for the target if you are overpaying for the target then the stock price of the acquirer should go down and that of the target should go up if you are underpaying for the target, then the target price should go up and a good should go down and the share price of the acquirer should go up. In any case, one person, one party should benefit more than the other. In a bidding war, it is typically the scene that acquirer will be incorrect, right? Because they'll overpay. They started at 315 and ended up paying somewhere around 560, 570 for the shares. That's almost 90% higher than what the initial price was, right? But both these shares surged, which basically means that financial markets sometimes tend to react incorrectly. So in theory, financial markets are efficient. Managers convey information in a timely manner and financial markets make judgment on this information based on the true value. As a consequence, a company that invests in good long term projects will be rewarded. Short term accounting gimmicks will not lead to increase in market value. Stock price performance is a good measure of company performance, right? In reality, however, this entire efficient market hypothesis has a huge number of holes, as we just saw in our example. Now, technically, ABG and Bharti both should she, see, she, you know, see their shares going down, and Great Offshore should see the shares going up. That's because there are two guys who are in a war to overpay for the assets of Great Offshore. So the shareholders of, of uh, Great Offshore should uh, should benefit in this entire scenario, right? But the stock market actually took the prices of these guys up as well and this guy up as well, right? So there's something wrong. Why is the actual experience different? That is because sometimes firms manage the information given out to the market, so they delay the bad news. Sometimes they resort to give misleading information. The second problem is investor reaction to the news. There tends to be an overreaction on either side. And we have to be aware of such limitations. The case we just discussed of ABG and Bharti seems to be a case where there is an overreaction on both the sides. Right? Finally, there seems to be an evidence of insider trading. Right. What is insider trading? Company insiders may have information and they may trade on this before it is made public. This is illegal. This is also unethical because they have access to information which other publicly available sources do not and hence they can make money at the expense of someone else who may be just an unsuspecting investor in the company. Right. So it is illegal in most geographies and um, that 
kind of acts as a deterrent but that does not necessarily mean that this does not happen at all right there are examples of people getting arrested on account of insider trading uh, trading uh, rules and flouting those rules essentially right so that's why sometimes financial markets react differently than what ought to be their reaction right however while this criticism is valid what works in the favor of financial markets is that a fast reaction or overreaction to any news is still better than some other metrics which just do not react to news so for example when tata steel went to acquire corus the stock price of tata steel fell right now in the near term there is going to be no impact on metrics like profit or sales till the time both the companies get together the stock price in a sense while sometimes it could be wrong sometimes or at least a few times it will give you an indication about whether the news is good or bad for the entire firm right secondly someone has to make this judgment right and whether the news is good or bad or you know the judgment might be imperfect but markets even while they are imperfect are better than managers or governments in finding out whether the news is good or bad managers will always say that the news is good and the government is basically not efficient or equipped enough to give you the correct picture right so from that perspective while markets are imperfect there is no two ways about it that markets may be imperfect but they are still your best bet in terms of giving a sense of whether a news is good for the company or not good for the company right so while markets are and there's one more criticism basically markets are considered very short term in nature they're considered fickle volatile short term in nature right they overreact to news but there is a couple of things that give us an evidence that possibly markets can go beyond the short term and look at value in the long run as well right for example there might be some small and young companies where even though they are making enough revenues they might not be making profits today they might be loss making companies right but the market gives them some value the market gives them a non zero positive value and that shows that the market can look in the future and try and predict that companies that are growing well may today not be making money but tomorrow they might start making money right secondly if a company comes up and says we are investing in research and development r and d the market reaction to this news is usually good now r&d is a long term investment this is a very clear long term investment the only reason market would react positively to this is that the markets are able to look beyond the short term and focus on the long term and say that look this research and development investment might actually be extremely beneficial for the shareholders and the company in the long run right so for all the imperfections that stock markets carry they still are one of our best bets to look at information analyze information and give us an idea whether or not the stock is pricing it correctly or incorrectly they might be wrong at variety of points of time but over the slightly longer run they start to give a correct picture right the next relationship we look at is firms and society now in theory all costs and benefits associated with the firm's decisions can be traced back to the firm right in practice financial decisions can create social costs and benefits sometimes good sometimes bad now what are the costs some of the negatives are things like environmental costs so you could end up with pollution you could end up with health cost for example if you have a coal mine a worker working in the coal mine will almost definitely end up with some sort of a respiratory problem right quality of life costs so traffic housing safety what happens when you put a factory right in the middle of the city what happens to the traffic around that area what happens to the housing problems around that area etc right then there are some benefits as well so if you put a put a factory in a remote village it will create employment in areas of high unemployment that's why governments try and give you tax breaks if you go and put uh, factories in remote areas they will support development in inner cities right they will create access to goods in areas where such access does not exist so 
examples of these are townships right typically barren land where nothing is happening a company can go and put up a factory create an entire township where a lot of employment is generated and people start staying there so it's not like firms decisions will only have social costs or negatives they can also have social benefits and it is difficult to actually gauge which is higher in real life right social costs are very difficult to quantify so for example two or three reasons why what is the quantified impact on society for example on account of tobacco right or cigarette smoking so itc is a company that produces cigarettes right how much of this impact would have happened even without itc producing or selling cigarettes if someone has to smoke cigarettes or someone has to take tobacco they would consume it regardless of whether itc produces cigarettes or not so while their producing cigarettes has a social cost have they actually increased it or reduced it why reduced it because in certain cases people might earlier be using unregulated forms of tobacco unregulated tobacco sources they might now go into an organized sector and that's a well regulated sector because there are quality checks in place around that right so we don't know whether they did bad to the society by producing a cigarette which someone will smoke and would be detrimental to the health or whether they actually did good for the society because someone who had to smoke would have anyway smoked maybe an unauthorized unregulated tobacco uh, source instead of that they've given an organized source which is regulated which can be checked you can still have some sort of quality checks there right the second problem is that this entire discussion is in the eyes of the beholder it's a person specific uh, decision so when i look at costs like cutting down a tree i may believe it is less important than what you might believe so the different decision uh, you know different uh, decisions will have different impacts and makers can look at those same social cost and weigh them very differently right finally we cannot know the unknown the cost may not be known at the time of taking those costs so let's say i'm producing a you know nuclear power today in a nuclear reactor a firm may think that it is delivering a product that enhances society because nuclear power is cheaper it is generally considered safer but at some point of time if there is a leakage in that plant that could be significantly huge as a cost for example this nuclear power right so it is difficult in this context to look at uh, look at the society now what happens when social costs are not taken care of is that the society would retaliate in some form or fashion right so when does traditional corporate finance theory break down when managers look at their interest first and firm interest later when bondholders are not protected against shareholders when financial markets do not operate efficiently and stock prices are you know not really reflective of uh, the underlying value of the firm and when significant social costs can be created as a by product of stock price maximization right in these cases traditional corporate finance will tend to break down but the market will probably have a self correcting mechanism so this is what can go wrong remember we go back to our earlier slide and we say this is what can go wrong now in reality even though it can go wrong the market will have some sort of a self correcting mechanism what is that self correcting mechanism so what will happen over a period of time is if managers keep taking stockholders for a ride they do not focus on the interest of stockholders then over a period of time there will be more activist investors who will come in who will go and fight with managers on on annual general meetings there will be hostile takeovers where essentially new investors will come in and say we can manage this firm better we will buy this firm out right in result managers of poorly run firms are put on notice they will eventually lose their jobs right if managers don't protect bondholders then bondholders will protect themselves they will start putting new clauses or what is called as covenants in bond structures which will protect them they will ensure that the same asset is not securitized twice 
they will ensure that if one bond holder defaults if if the company defaults on one bond holder then all other bond holders also get their money back right stock markets will also retaliate firms that are misleading markets they will get punished investors and analysts will become more skeptical of the firm they will not accept value on face value they will go and dig deeper into everything that the firm say right so over a period of time so for example in india infrastructure firms real estate firms when they come up with reports not very, not everyone really believes those reports on face value that's because there is a history of misleading markets right finally if managers don't take care of society one there would be good citizen constraints that would be put in by good companies over a period of time second there will be more laws or more backlash from investors or customers either customers will give you your products back either investors will dump the stock or the government will come and put a penalty on on social costs getting created right and that is an extremely important self correcting mechanism which will bring us back to the point that at the end of the entire story stock price maximization or firm value maximization assuming bonds are kind of protected so you maximize the firm value minus the bond value is going to eventually maximize the stock price value right so effectively if you can maximize this over a medium to longer run the market will self correct itself and weed out the incorrect practices from the entire scenario right so with that we broadly come to the end of the first unit in applied corporate finance we'll move further to now look at the uh, the first principles and the basic objective function once again before we leave explain what is the criticism of the relationship between the firm and the financial markets and explain why is it difficult to quantify the impact of the firm's business on society thank you